Hey friends, it's Ariel Fishman from Adventure Israel. We're out here in the Jerusalem Hills, just south of Jerusalem, a place called the Mata Spring, which is right behind us. We're going to do some cordage today from natural fibers. These are from the insides of a date palm, which are found locally here and also all over Israel. Just beneath the outer bark, which is what I'm sitting on here, is the outer bark. Just beneath the outer bark, you have the internal fibers, excellent cordage material. What I did just to get these ripe and ready to use is just drop them in the water to soften up a bit so they're less brittle, easier to work with, and we're going to start. So whenever you're making cordage, doing what's called the reverse twist, you're always going to want to have one short side and one long side. That's going to allow for splicing the materials in a way that the splices alternate, they're not in the same spots. What we do is just start real simply, get about two-thirds and one-third split over there, start with a simple twist. Okay. Another way to do it is to put it on your pant leg, just roll them out until you develop a kink. Once you get that kink, let that kink fold into, onto itself, and you're going to continue that same process of twisting and allowing it to kink. Twisting, keeping the same direction on each strand, allowing it to kink. What is, what's happening is the twists are actually binding onto themselves to keep the cordage together. Again, we're just rolling it out. This is the simplest, fastest way to do it. Not necessarily the strongest, but the simplest, fastest, fastest method. Roll it out in your pant leg. The friction of your pant leg creates a really good surface to roll on. Switch to the other strand. Do the same thing. It's going to naturally bind onto itself. We're going to continue that through until we get to where we get to where there's one a couple of inches left on the shorter side. And then we'll begin splicing the other materials in. All right, we're up to where the short end is now short enough to introduce the next set of strands. Okay, where our, our first splice is going to be. If you look carefully, you see that there's a nice clean reverse twist on our first bit of cordage, and it's holding itself. I'm not, I don't need to hold it for that pinch for that that twist to stay there. It's binding on itself because of that reverse thread we have going on. What we're going to do is we're going to fan out the fibers of the new strand that we're introducing and just interlock them into the fibers that are hanging the short end of the existing rope. I'm just going to mesh them in there a bit, put that back onto your pant legs, same deal. We're going to roll it out, roll them in together. Whenever you have a splice, you are going to end up with the short side becoming your new long side, and you're also going to end up with a little bit of a lump where they were connected. Okay, that's totally fine. We're gonna clean it up. These little strands that are hanging out on the sides, we're gonna clean that up when we're finished with the process. Okay, so all I did just twist that, introduce that new strand, twist it in there nice and tight, and then continue the same process as we did before. Now our long side is, has now become our short side. And our splice is being fully integrated into the cordage. This is more than adequate. Okay, so what we got here is about eight inches of that palm fiber cordage going on. It's about seven or eight splices in here, so it takes a lot to get a short length of rope. It finishes looking like this, which obviously is not the final product. Once you're done with whatever length of rope you're going to make, and this can go endless, you can make hundreds of feet like this, it just takes time. Okay, you look carefully, there's a nice tight weave on there. We're just going to clean up the fringes that are hanging off the sides. So we're going to just take them, slice them off, scissor would do just fine. We're going to clean up all those pieces and show you the finished product. So here's our final piece of cordage. Cordage have many good uses. For one, they make excellent YouTube survival videos here in Israel. Okay, that's use number one. Use number two, for something about this thickness, you could use it for fishing line. You could use this for a snare. You could use this to tie up your friend, the videographer, ideally. Um, if you need something stronger, if you, for instance, you need to build a shelter with, so you could make many feet of something this thickness and then multiply them and do the same system we just did making this. You could do with multiple strands of this thickness and basically just multiplying the strength each time you do it. That's actually a stronger rope than taking thicker bundles and doing a simple reverse twist with a thicker bundle. Better to start with thinner bundles, make thinner line, 
and then work the lines together. The same way you'd have multiple ply rope that are sold in stores. It's the same methodology, twine, same idea. But something like this can be used making nets, fishing line, simple, simple, simple structures would work on something this strong. It's plenty, plenty, plenty strong. Much stronger than the fiber was originally. That's it. See you next time.